In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss price floors with some calculations. I've added links to an entire playlist on price floors and price ceilings below. This is what the final output of this video looks like, and I'm going to go through this step by step. Along the x-axis is quantity per time, per unit of time. And along the vertical axis, or the y-axis, I'm going to plot prices. I'm going to set the y-intercept for the demand curve at $20 and draw on the demand curve. I am going to set the y-intercept for the supply curve at $2 and draw in the supply curve. In this case, the equilibrium price will be $10. And equilibrium quantity will be 10 units. At equilibrium, quantity is quantity demanded. And it's also equal to quantity supplied. Remember, producer surplus is the area above the supply curve and below price. I'm going to make a table so I can keep track of everything. I'm going to calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus and deadweight loss. And I'll keep track of totals too. The length of this side of the triangle is 8 or 10 minus 2. The length of the other side of the triangle is 10. It's just this distance right here. It's 10, 10 units. The area of this triangle is 1 half base times height. It's 1 half times 10 times 8. And this equals to 40. So producer surplus before a price floor is 40. Consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve and above price, or the area of this triangle. This side of the triangle is 10, and the base is also 10. So the area is 1 half base times height, or 1 half 10 times 10, which is equal to 50. So consumer surplus is 50. Now I'm going to add consumer surplus plus producer surplus, which are these two triangles, or this area right here, and this adds up to 90. So I can conclude did white loss before price floor is zero. When government imposes a price floor, it sets a price above market price. If I impose a price floor of $15, my quantity demanded will be 5, and my quantity supplied will be around 16. Price floor, quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. I'm also going to draw in one more line where quantity demanded crosses the quantity supplied or touches it or intersects, and that is going to be $6. Consumer surplus starts with this large area and it shrinks to this new area. It's still the area below the demand curve and above price. The area of this smaller triangle is 1 half base times height, or 1 half times 5 times 5, and this equals to 12.5. So consumer surplus after a price floor is 12.5, and it's gone down negative 37.5. And that 37.5 is this area right here. Producer surplus is this new area. That area plus this area, the one I'll outline in black here. And what's left over is this area, this triangle, and that's called deadweight loss. To calculate deadweight loss, I'm going to take the area of this triangle, and it has a height of... 5 and a base of 5 for an area of 12.5. Again, 1 half base time height. This other triangle has a height of 4 and a base of 5. And so its area is 10. Again, 1 half times 4 times 5 is 10. If I add these two triangles together, they add up to 22.5, which is dead weight loss. Deadweight loss increases to 22.5 after a price floor. 
To calculate producer surplus, I have to, which is this area here, let me draw that first. I can actually take 90, since I know this whole column adds up to 90. I can take 90 and subtract consumer surplus, which is 12.5, and then the dead weight loss, which is 22.5, and this gives me producer surplus, which is 55. So with this price for, producer surplus increases by 15. And by the way, this column adds up to zero. There you have it, Bob's your uncle. Share the knowledge, share the love, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus. this ever ends, this it does. Share the knowledge, Facebook, Google+, Plus, and Twitter. Links to playlists below. Make sure you subscribe and like. Please like my videos. Please. Please. Please.